the Expendables. This would have to be the largest gathering of action movie stars in any one movie, and that in itself is quite an accomplishment. However, when I first heard that there was a movie being made with that many big action stars like that, my initial reaction was, well, you know that saying about too many chefs spoil the cooking or something like that? I mean, sure, you can make one guy or maybe two, maybe a couple really cool for 90 minutes, two hours, but when you have like half a dozen, how are you going to make sure that there's time enough for all of them to be interesting, to distinguish themselves in this one movie, to not just live off what we've seen them do in other movies by themselves. You know, it's like with the X-Men movies. I mean, all three movies and Wolverine have way too many characters that are supposed to stand out and you wind up with scenes where they either do stuff one by one or where several of them get written out so that you can focus on just a couple of them. So I do want to make that absolutely clear, that does not happen here. Unfortunately, what does happen is that really only Statham and Sly get that much screen time of the big action stars. Lee and Lundgren are in it a pretty fair amount too, although Lee barely fights. I think he has one big martial arts fight, and I must compliment him for once it didn't look like he was doing everything helped by wires. However, he still can't act. I guess we'll call it even. Lundgren is really cool and imposing as always. Anyway, Lee does some moves and so does Couture, if that's how you pronounce it. I didn't even know about him before I watched this movie and I didn't know until afterwards that he was some kind of fighter. But mostly the moves they throw are, you know, the one-hit kill kind, you know, to take out Faceless Goon number 453. Eric Roberts is great as the villain we love to hate. Stone Cold Steve Austin, I was fairly impressed. He has pretty decent screen presence, and they get nice mileage out of him. Anyway, Terry Crews, Couture, and... Jet Li are really only in it at the very beginning and then towards the end. Other than that, it's Statham and Sly. The plot is not terribly well written and is fairly poorly told. It's almost downright confusing. The gist of the setup here is that there's this small island, their government is corrupt, there's a CIA agent involved, Roberts, and Rambo and his team are sent to deal with it. And they utilize the unique approach of blowing shit up. There are a ton of big explosions, we've got car chases, countless people are shot, knifed, blown to bits. The action was definitely the focus here, and most of the time it is great. It's a lot of fun, although at times there is so much of it in one chunk that not all of it really registers with you. You know, like when you're watching a Steven Sommers film or Paul W. S. Anderson film. The film is a lot like the most recent Rambo. Gotta give Sly credit, he really went for it and no holding back on the blood, the violence, the body count is ridiculous ridiculously high. You know, it's like one of those 80s and 90s action flicks, only this one doesn't really feel like it's been limited by a certain budget. You know, in a lot of those movies, there'll be scenes where, you know, a handful of people die. Here, I would say probably over 100, maybe over 200 die in this. It is a little unfortunate that Sly wants to have his cake and eat it too. You see, he writes these islanders as, you know, not the enemy, you know, this is not some, you know, communist little island where everybody should die. You know, this isn't Rambo 2 or 3. 
where there is one group that is defined as without a doubt the enemy. Unfortunately, Sly and his team massacre the native soldiers by the boatloads. This uses a lot of classic rock and that is very well chosen. It really fits the mood. And it's not some fucking remix version either. They're the real deal. The dialogue tends to be pretty bad. A lot of corny lines. I'd say at least half of what is said between Charisma Carpenter, who by the way is also in this for very, very little time, and Jason Statham is right out of fucking Dr. Phil or some soap opera. The humor mostly tries way too hard, especially the banter which is meant to make us feel like these guys really know each other and have been together for a long time. It just does not work. It hardly ever is funny. With that said, there are some real laugh out loud moments in this movie. Really great guy humor. You may already know, but Arnie and Bruce Willis are almost not in this movie at all. Arnie's part could have worked, but the lines they give him, it just really didn't come together. They do have one or two kinda good jokes there in his scene though. The acting isn't good, but what do you expect? These are action stars, they're not actors. Several of them are just real life fighters. There are a lot of cliches and stereotypes to be expected, you know. It really does work as one of those kind of brainless 80s, 90s action flicks. You just sit back and enjoy. Don't think about too much of anything in it. And it'll more or less deliver. I've heard that a sequel is already well under consideration. I have one main request. Try not to jam-pack that many action stars into it. Or make it more balanced between them. I know what I said at the beginning of this video, but if two guys can work for about two hours, four guys, or at least three, pretty much should be able to as well. Hell, how about this? Cut, Sly, and Statham. We've gotten to enjoy them for a movie now. Give the other guys some space, or bring in some new guys and let them take the leads for a while. I think that would be the best way to go with this, because, come on, we have seen Sly do his thing and stat him for several very memorable action movies by now. I mean, if you want good action with Stallone, you know, just watch the original Rambo, the most recent Rambo, or this, and stat him, I mean, the transporter, I don't know, I hear he's good in the new Death Race, I haven't watched it. I mean, before I watched The Transporter, I couldn't have imagined him as an action star. I also hear that Crank is very intense and a lot of fun. I know, shame on me for not having watched it, I am getting to it. Anyway, all in all, it's not bad, but if you're expecting a lot of screen time from any of the action stars other than Statham and Stallone, or if you're expecting anything other than just a big action romp, you're gonna be disappointed. This also really doesn't particularly have good one-liners. Overall, I'd say it's worth checking out. Of course, if you do want that vintage 80s action flick kind of thing, you know, you may have already watched them, but, you know, Commando, Universal Soldier, The Terminator, Robocop, Total Recall, most Arnie flicks, really. Van Damme did a couple of good ones, too. And it doesn't quite match up with the A-Team, but still, it's enjoyable. Anyway, that was my spoiler-free review. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.